So it's cold, windy, and rainy. What a perfect time to go film a video at the night market. Let me try that one again. Hey there guys, welcome to another video. It's Prazi here, and today we're gonna to be looking at a night market. Basically, night markets can be found all over Asia, uh, from China to Japan, and Taiwan is no different. Now, Taiwan has proven itself to be a really cool place, and it's made even better by these night markets. Now, I took a walk around here before filming this, and it's a lot bigger um, than I thought it'd be, so it's gonna take a while. Pocket's cold. So like a lot of night markets around the world, you can do a lot of stuff. You can play games, buy food, and clothes, and all kinds of stuff. Even stuffed dicks, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, so we're gonna show you all the stuff you can buy here at the Fungia Night Market. So I forgot to mention that my friends from Asia Brew here are helping me film, which you should have been in the intro. I fucked up this whole video. <laughs> That's okay, it's like every video. Now, an adventure with a prize usually doesn't start without a bunch of beer. No, I couldn't think of a more appropriate way to start off a video than buying some Japanese beer at a Taiwanese market. It's perfect. I know, exactly. I mean, this was Japan for a while, right? Kind of, yeah, they annexed the place, but we'll, we'll get around to some Taiwanese beer later. I think most people kind of look like douchebags if they walk around in public with beers, like in the West. It's legal in Taiwan to walk around with beer, so it's not illegal, but we do look like a bit of a... Bit, I am a douchebag, so I think it's fine. Anyways, cheers to this. Cheers. Let's go explore this night market a little bit. So we've been walking around uh, the night market, and these night markets, especially in Taiwan, they love claw games. Now in the West, I sort of feel like a lot of us see these claw games as like scams, like you can't win them, and it's probably true. But I'm looking at this Magikarp right here from Pokemon. Now I'm a massive Pokemon fan, for those of you that don't know. But I'm thinking, I should be able to get that Magikarp down the slope. I love how they put the worst Pokemon too in there for me to get. I also like the guy from, um, Son of a bitch, all these anime fans are gonna be really upset with me. From uh, Spirited Away, the guy that eats everything. Oh yeah. I really want that thing. Anyways, we ran out of coins, so what we're gonna do is take a $100 bill, and they have these like coin slot machines that you can sort of put this in and you get coins. I don't know, what do you call that in English? I don't speak English. Yeah, my, my English is poor, so. Uh, anyways, let's see if we can, we can do this. Also, I just really wanna point out quickly that there's like, the weird thing about Taiwan is I don't, I don't want to go like perverted like Japanese people, but they love these like stuffed dicks. Um, and there's like this thing that children can play on. There was just children there a minute ago. I didn't want to film. But basically they can play on that and then right behind it are these stuffed dicks, which I find slightly hilarious, but anyways. Do you have cock? Remember? All right, my Western brothers, I think, I think we were correct. These things were scams. <laughs> we did win a dick, unsurprisingly. So one really interesting thing about Taiwan that I really like is the Japanese influence. Now, it is everywhere. Like, you do see it. I mean, the fact that I get to eat a bowl of ramen is really cool. I never really got to eat ramen back in China, actually, not th that much. Oh, that um, sucks. But I was okay with it, though, because Chinese food is really, 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 really good. Um, and this is, I'm not saying this to like offend Taiwanese people. Um, honestly, local Taiwanese food is... Yeah, not as good. It's not as good. It's, it's I mean, again, it's, it's hard to say because there's so much Chinese food and it's so diverse, but I find local Chinese food is, or uh, Taiwanese food, pardon me, is, is a bit bland. That doesn't mean it's I bad. I just mean like the flavors aren't really there. Um, but, but that's okay though, because it's offset by the amount of ramen and Japanese food you can eat here, which is awesome, because I love Japanese food. You can get Japanese food back in China, don't get me wrong, but it's expensive, and it, you don't get really get ramen. What do you get? Yeah, just like sushi and like, you know, your, your salads and Japanese food like that. Um, but but I, I'm, I'm super, I'm super, super impressed with Taiwan. Um, uh, with just the amount of stuff you can get here as far as like noodles and food and, and all the, the different influences and stuff that they incorporate. It's um, awesome. They have, a, they have a huge food selection that you can get. Besides, like, decent Mexican food, which I'm sure you weren't eating a lot of that anyway in China. No. Uh, you can really get, like, everything you're looking for here. And it's, it's awesome. I mean, as far as, like, Asian food goes. Yeah, no, of course. And I think that's, I think Taiwan has that advantage where, because it's so small, uh, the cities are quite, like, it's a densely populated area. Like, there's only, what, 28 million people here, but it's so densely populated that the big cities do have those international foods. So like, yeah, okay, Mexican's pretty specific, but you can yeah, get like, there's like three Indian restaurants on my street. Yeah, true. Which is awesome. You are by all the Indian restaurants. 
markets were pretty yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know why, but, but we're here to talk about night markets. Now, what are some of the things that you, like, what's a type of food you would normally find at a, at a Taiwanese night market? So you're definitely going to find a ton of stinky tofu. Yeah. And, and for anybody who has not tried, I really wish, and I've said this in other videos, I wish you guys could smell stinky tofu. Yeah. I wish Google would get on that. Yeah, well, like it's like, they'll just like a sensor in their camera, they can smell stinky yes. tofu. It's awful. Uh, just to like bring you guys in on the death in your nose that is stinky tofu. Imagine like standing next to a sewer that's been like roasting in the sun full of like dirty gym socks and tofu. And that's, that kind of gives you an idea of uh, stinky tofu. I would say that's about correct. Now, you would also find your wife with very tired arms, but we must <laughs> film. Sorry, Vicky. Uh, you can get all kinds of, like, dumplings or, I mean, there's a Cuban stand, like, down. Really? Yeah, down. down we got to hit that up. I've never had good. Cuban food. Oh, really? I've never had, Dude, they're called Cubans, Cuban. and Americans yeah. love these Cuban sandwiches. It's amazing. Um, so this night market is right beside um, the university, which is, is it Feng Jiao University? Feng Jiao, yeah. yeah. Which is really great. So you get a lot of young university students here that don't really have a lot of money. And what that means is the food and the drinks are pretty cheap, which pretty is great. Cheap. Because I've been to a lot of night markets that are kind of touristy and they bump up the prices to try and like get more people to go. Um, but I really like this. I mean, we bought four Asahi beers for, for 50 four. 50 in tea a piece. Yeah, for, for one beer. So it's a 410 for four beers, which is great. That's, incredible. That's super cheap. Uh, these noodles are really cheap as well. 210. 210. What did I say? 410. Shit, it yeah, was not two, 410. Two it's 210. Ten. Four beers. Yeah. Um, and so it's, it's really cool that it's actually like a local market, not like a touristy market as well. Um, Plenty of tourists, but they don't take advantage. I mean, this place is so fucking big, the though. The claw games definitely take advantage. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've been spending way seen. too much time there. Yeah. <laughs> so another huge part of Taiwanese culture is snacks. Can we get, can we get like a snacks meme rolling on here? <laughs> <laughs> One of my personal favorite snacks, especially back in China, were these like candied uh, crab apples, and um, basically just diabetes on a stick, which is the same thing here. They've got like candied strawberries, which look amazing. So I kind of want to get one. I won't be able to finish one, but uh, maybe you, you, Vicky, you got to help me finish this stuff. Sure. I'm also su super impressed that like Vicky was able to hold a camera up with her hands for so long because like we would get Vivi to do that and she would just yell at us. <laughs> like that's her thing. Like behind camera, you guys don't know. You guys don't know. Vivi's like a wonderful, sweet person on camera, and then behind camera, she's like, Matthew Thomas, Ty! You know, whatever, and then we'll like go out to film, and then she has to like forget the keys, and we get to go back in, they're yelling at each other, it's just, it's a fucking mess. You I bet you right now, as I'm filming, Seamus getting the shit kicked out of him. <laughs> That's her, that's her line, by the way, Matthew Thomas. Uh, yeah, uh, like each one says stuff up there. Fast Wu. Fuck me, 85 quad. Yeah, yeah. So another thing, like, I remember when I first came to Taiwan, I couldn't find anything to eat. I was like, all these people eat are like desserts and fucking bubble tea. <laughs> so yeah, this is my first time. I'm assuming this is like the type of rice paper you can eat, or is it not? I think it is. I hope it is. Otherwise, I'm just eating fucking wax paper on camera. <laughs> you can eat this shit, right? No, what? The paper? No. Fuck you. There you can. Really, you can't. Don't eat it. You just ate it. You can eat it. <laughs> I'm sorry. You can't. She's a liar. I told her. I don't know that. I don't know that. This is literally diabetic anal bees on a stick. But it's not good. So I know none of you actually care about the snacks and the food and the drinks and all that kind of stuff. What my viewers really want to see here is booze in a bag, which is exactly what we're going to get. Fucking liquor in a sack, my friend. So we found this uh, this, this, this nice chap who's going to uh, fix us up a little cocktail of mystery. Uh, <laughs> just No matter what we ordered, yeah. he's just going to give us what he feels. Well, booze in a bag, my friend. So we've got our uh, Around the World here, which honestly looks a lot like Windex. <laughs> Exactly like Windex. We could probably clean the counter. Let's have a go. Are we certain that's around the world? Where are you now? <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. Um, that's really good. 
Yeah, it starts off sweet and then the alcohol kicks you, but um, it's good. It tastes <laughs> like Windex. How's oh, yeah. the booze in a bag, right? It's not bad. Not bad, booze was, in a bag. I was afraid it was going to be um, pretty sugary, but it's actually not. It's not that sweet. It's pretty good. Really good. Obviously, a hell of a marketing campaign putting this right next. I, I, if this was next to my university, I never would have graduated. Like, no. I'd still be Canada in Canada, <laughs> like, in a dumpster somewhere. <laughs> Drinking Windex out of a bag. Woo! Around the world, huh? So I think like these are the kind of images that people conjure up in their mind when they think about markets in Asia. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And to be honest, like I, I will be showing you guys more. This place is way too big uh, to, to 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 put it all in one video. Uh, so we will be coming and, and revisiting this place on both of our channels. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, to kind of explore more of it because there's a lot. Like you can see even behind us, like there's places you can buy clothes, all kinds of stuff. It's just it's way too big. But I do find it really interesting, and I I, I feel like. We don't, I, I keep saying we, but back in China, like we don't really get markets like these in a, in a lot of places, at least in places like in, in Huizhou where I live. Where I live in Hunan, we had tons of these markets. They're really famous for their night markets for food and stuff, really delicious food. Um, but Taiwan is, is packed full of them. I feel like every city has a night market, which is awesome. Yeah, I really dig a it. A couple night markets. Yeah. Um, I mean, they're, they're, they're really over sort of stimulating, as you can probably tell. Again, I'm not wearing my microphone, otherwise you wouldn't be able to hear this guy. Um, and, and it's, but it's, it's cool. It's I awesome. really like it, and yeah. it's sprawling, and there's just endless amounts of food that you can try. Exactly. So it's awesome. I remember it's wanting to move to another place that had night markets too, because you've been to Korea. Yeah. Yeah. The night markets there. They're awesome. They're fucking cool. They're, they're really cool. I mean, you can get, obviously each night market that you go to, the food is gonna be like a little different and each region has like its thing. Sure. Um, but this one and this one, and we, we, I don't know if we mentioned it before, but this is supposed to be the biggest in Taiwan. There may, there may be a couple that I've are heard, bigger. I've heard this is the biggest one in Taichung or Taiwan. They make the claim. I don't know. I think it's like the longest one or the widest longest. one. Longest, let's go with longest. Yeah. Uh, but whatever the case, we will be revisiting this place uh, again because it's so fucking cool. Um, so stay tuned, stay positive. Please subscribe for videos that I release every... That he releases. I release them. <laughs> uh, but stay positive. <laughs> Keep your stick on the ice and uh, I'll catch you on the next video. Also, another big thank you to you guys from Asia Brew uh, for helping me film and, and coming along and, and, and tagging along. Thank you to you, sir.